Hello, I'm 82 Richardson. And I'm 82 Collins. And I'm Adrian Wood. We're from CNAU Lamar, California, and today we're going to be going over the pre-operational inspection and setup of the ETU engine trailer 110, as well as some key safety concerns. We are now going to go over to the ground support equipment facility so we can conduct the inspection. The ET-110 is a four-wheeled hydraulic scissor lift design made up of a base and movable tabletop design for the installation and removal of the F-414 Type GE Type 400 engine for the F-18 EFG series aircraft. The trailer comes with engine transporting gear that can be removed or installed. Caution: Never attempt to transport an engine without this gear installed. Failure to do so may result in ground mishap or damage to equipment. As with any aviation support equipment, and especially load-bearing equipment, it is paramount that a thorough pre-operational inspection or pre-op be performed prior to use and properly documented. We will be utilizing NAVAIR 19, TEC 600, TEC 29, TEC 6, TEC 1 when performing the pre-operational check. This checklist contains inspection requirements to ensure the integrity of the equipment for operation and determine any need for servicing. The time required to perform these tasks is approximately 0.5 hours. Pre-operational checklist maintenance requirements shall be accomplished prior to the first operation of the day and slash or before each use. The length of inspection time will be shortened in this video to identify the critical inspection areas and common discrepancies to look for. First, we will start with the set of the inspection pre-op on the brakes. Brakes should be checked for obvious signs of damage, effective operation and placed in the set position. Tires. Tires should be checked for damage, particularly the steel wheel assemblies, missing chunks in tire tread, even wear of tread, bubbles or cuts in sidewalls, and proper inflation. Tow bar. Check the tow bar for damage and security, paying close attention to welds for cracks and attached pins slash lanyards ensuring all pieces are present. Hubcaps. Verify presence of all four hubcaps. Check for proper security. Placards. Check placards for location, legibility, and security. Warning. Mill tack PRF tag 832A2 hydraulic fluid may be irritating to the skin and eyes. Keep fluid off skin, eyes, and clothes. Wear eye protection and nitrile gloves. Consult the applicable safety data sheet and local occupational safety and health regulations for additional information. Inspect hydraulic system. This unit's hydraulic system consists of four pumps, two sets forward and aft. The inboard set is used for actuating the wheel assemblies, and the outboard set is used for operating table actuators. There are four actuators for the table assembly, and one actuator at each wheel assembly. Pay close attention to the actuators and seals for evidence of leakage, which would be cause for a rejection. Check all connecting lines for pinches, leaks, cracks, and fraying. Hydraulic Reservoir Check hydraulic reservoir for proper fluid level. Make sure the table assembly and wheel assemblies are in the lowered positions prior to checking level. Failure to do so may result in over-service condition if fluid is added. Verify that fluid is at least 3 inches from bottom of tank. Service with Miltac PRF tag A32A2 hydraulic fluid if required. The next part of our pre-operation inspection will be the functional check. This inspection ensures that the trailer's moving parts and safety devices are in proper working order. Be sure to exercise safety when raising and lowering the table. During these steps, ensure that verbal calls are made such as clear the area, raising and lowering stand. Ensure call is received by confirmation call of area is clear. Raise lift past first locking position. Visually inspect actuation. Watch for any leaks or binding action. Slowly release hydraulic pressure and ensure both forward and aft safety poles engage and stand does not pat lower pass stops. Inspect traverse assembly gears for missing teeth, proper lubrication, and freedom of movement, and ensure that there is no binding. Inspect rotation adjusters and linkages for security, freedom of movement, ensuring that there is no binding. Check safety locks for proper operation by pushing down on them. Verify that they lift the lock tabs on the back side of the actuators. Release the lock handle and ensure that the handles spring back into position. Check all attached lanyards and pins for security and presence of all pieces. In the next steps, we will discuss the procedures for zeroing out the trailer prior to engine removal. These steps can be found in the Maintenance Diagnostic Repair Tool, or MDART. 
under engine removal procedures. Minimal space for movement adjustment exists once the trailer is in the guide rails. Heaving the trailer in a neutral position prevents having to make unnecessary movements or adjustments during the engine removal process. Some trailers may have a black stripe that indicates the table alignment with the trailer. Use the table adjustment knobs if necessary to align the table. Ensure that the forward and aft table lock pins are installed. Note, forward and aft engine mount nominal or neutral position will be such that the entire white index band is visible beyond the adapter, and no unbanded portion of the ram is exposed. Adjust the forward engine mount to nominal position as indicated by a white index band and remove lock pin from clevis. Adjust the aft engine mount, or spider, to a nominal position as indicated by white index band. Remove lock pin from clevis. To adjust the roll of the trailer adapter, use a 3 quarter inch drive ratchet and extension, inserting it into the roll adjuster. Using the trailer rails as a reference, ensure that both sides are evenly distanced from the deck. To adjust the yaw of the trailer adapter, use a 3 quarter inch drive ratchet and extension, inserting it into the yaw adjuster. Adjust yaw so that even spacing exists between table and trailer frame at all four corners. If positioning trailer from aft of aircraft while in running gear, be sure to first lower trailer running gear so that the trailer is a maximum of one inch off the deck. This will ensure that you have enough cl clearance to lower the engine clear of the guide rails. Ensure that running gear safety pins are removed prior to lowering gear. Using the hydraulic release valve, slowly let out pressure until trailer is one inch from the deck. If aircraft cannot be approached from aft, the ET-110 is equipped with casters to aid in positioning trailer from the side of the aircraft. To install the casters, remove them from their stowed positions and connect them to the post at each corner of the trailer using the lock pins. Once secured, ensure running gear safety pins are removed and lower trailer using hydraulic release valve until trailer is rested onto the casters. Use hydraulic selector valve and pump assembly to raise running gear off of the deck. During removal of engines, the ET-110 table safety catches have a tendency to get stuck in the closed position, preventing the table from lowering. You could troubleshoot this situation by bringing all maintenance to a stop, pump the stand back up, observe, and make sure each safety brake is properly disengaged, and repeat the process. Well, this concludes our pre-operational inspection and setup of the ETU-110. Using the procedures identified in this video, we'll ensure your ETU-110 is in proper working condition and ready for aircraft engine replacement. Always keep safety in mind when using this type of equipment. Safety is paramount. I'm Adrian Wood. I'm Adrian Collins. And I'm Adrian Richardson with CNIU Lamore, California. Have, Have a fine Navy day. day.